it's Cliff here from Down Under. In this video, I'm going to talk about three jaw chuck accuracy, go a bit deeper into it. I'll talk about ways that you can support and stabilize your work, ways that you can improve the stability and the accuracy of your three jaw chuck holding power. I'm going to do a run of Arbors for the ITTP. And these are the new 12 millimeter arbors. If you're interested, um, they will fit into a BT30 adapter or into an ER collet type spindle. So I'll start up a run of those. I'll show some clips of that using a recessed type spider. I'll also explain other types of spiders and ways that you can greatly improve the stability and accuracy of your chuck work. You may think of a three jaw chuck as a way of holding the work on the diameter with the jaws and they grip it on the outside diameter of your work. Well that's fine if you've got a long work or part of a relatively small diameter that holds it perfectly adequately. But as the diameter increases and the depth of engagement in the chuck becomes less, that becomes more and more unstable to the point where several nasty things can happen. Under heavy machining um, and parting and rough, rough drilling, uh, the chatter and vibration and just general machine vibration can cause the part to work its way further down into the jaw. It can cause it to fret and rattle around within the jaw and it even can cause the part to suddenly move off center and cause an almighty crash. Now ways that you can greatly stabilize your three jaw chuck for that type of situation is the spider, the chuck parallel or the chuck stop, commonly called a spider. It can be a flat spider like that these are a set of three that I made up that are of different thicknesses so that you can put them in different combinations and leave different distances beyond the end of the spider. There I could grip a very small disc and a different combination again allows the part, the work, to go further into the chuck. Also, this is a recess spider that allows the work to go even further into the chuck. Now these greatly increase the stability and accuracy of your chuck. And also they provide very effective stops for production work, referencing your part or your work off the back of the part. So there's a lot of advantages to make up these relatively simple spiders packers, stops, chuck parallels, whatever you want to call them. In this video, I'll be setting up the Slant Pro 15L to machine a run of ITTP arbors with a 12 millimeter shank. These are going to be rough machined on the Slant Pro lathe, later hardened and then cylindrically ground. But I'll take you through setting it up and machining the arbors. Um, I'm going to be using this recessed spider. This is different from a flat spider which I've made up which is um, flat hardened and ground steel but this recessed spider allows the work to give you a different type of depth of engagement. But I'll take you through setting up the lathe on the 15L running some parts and discussing this type of subject to set your work in your three jaw chuck, you can use a chuck parallel or chuck spider, different designs, and that holds your work much more securely in the chuck. It locates it in an exact C position, Z position, and also supports it a lot more under the heavy cutting loads. So you can use a uh, very sticky grease to Make sure it doesn't uh, shift when you're putting each part in. Then as you set each part in, you set it up against the chuck parallel or spider, tighten it up, 
And now you've got location lengthwise um, and much more secure seat because it's sitting on the end and in the diameter. It's holding it parallel and square, axially and radially in line, and it can take much heavier uh, forces for rough machining and parting. You're much less likely to have a uh, part moving and uh, accuracy issues. This is increasingly useful as the work becomes larger in diameter and the engagement lengthwise in the chuck becomes less and less. Then the part becomes more and more unstable and at risk of shifting under heavy machining load. So this type of chuck parallel or spider is very useful for large diameter work relative to the length of engagement because it utilizes not just the chuck jaw grip but also the large end face of the work up against the chuck parallel or spider and that really provides a secure seat for the work. Of course it's likely your saw won't cut the back of the part off exactly square and you'll just need to take a quick skim cut to get it perfectly square by facing it in the lathe. Of course that generates an exact right angle. Quickly facing your part off in a lathe manually can be very fast if you employ what's called wiper technology. Let me demonstrate. Just a few seconds. I'll explain what that is now. So let's zoom in on the tool and explain wiper technology, wiper. So the tool is wiping the work. So there's a big flat area of contact with the work. See that surface contacting the work there? You can have a much faster feed rate because the tool is not just generating a flat surface, it's also forming a flat surface. And while the surface may not be as flat as a generated surface, it is concentric and perfectly adequate for a uh, reallocation support surface like this. So wiper technology is, allows you very fast feed rates at the price of a slightly less flat surface. And this becomes even more useful for production work when you're making multiple parts because each part is referenced by the chuck spider or parallel and its Z position. It becomes a chuck stop as well as a more secure way, way of holding the part. So each part is referenced in the same position relative to the back surface of the part. So just looking at that recessed spider closely, so it's just set back a bit, sort of like a dish shape, in order to give it a bit more length in the chuck. Um, so the thickness of the spider is not affecting its uh, depth of holding. And it's just clearance there uh, cut out where the jaws are, so that the jaws can tighten on the work and not the spider and uh, clearance there on that diameter as well. So it's just hitting on that flat surface in the bottom and the chuck jaws.
So now all the tool offsets are set. To set the work offset, mount your work in the chuck and uh, index into the Z position where you want to face off Z0 and just set it here with the Z work offset DRO like that. Now you've shifted all of the tool offsets as a family to that new work Z0 position. The X's don't need to be changed because they're set on X0. machine something like that up out of high tensile steel out of a piece of uh, bar and the lathe I'll just pause the screen and print that off if you want to make something similar it's easy enough to make machine it and then part it off before you fully part it off while it's still on the bar of stock put it in the vise in the mill and just machine those three clearance uh, little slots in there so the jaws can move. They don't need to be anything clever, they're just clearance. Alright, well let's look at these spiders a little bit more closely. So you can see there I've got some tape inside the slots, some uh, foam tape, or you could use uh, silicon, a little bead of silicon, and that stops the spider from rattling around too much when you're machining. Um, you need to think about safety too. Obviously if the jaws are too far, far apart to hold the spider securely, you don't want a situation where the spider could flick out when the chuck is running at high revs and fire across the workshop uh, like a projectile. That would be very dangerous. So make sure the spider is trapped in place. You could put a hole in the middle, a little thread, and put a uh, insert in there that registered on the bore of the chuck so that the spider couldn't ever come out if you had a job where the jaws were beyond the spider. So think about uh, trapping the spider in place so it can't come out. So have a look at this little drawing here. Uh, hopefully you can see that okay. So this spider is, these spiders are about 80 millimeters diameter. The jaws are about 18 millimeters thick on this three jaw chuck so I made the slots about 19 millimeters thick so I could put some foam tape or silicon in there and I've got different thicknesses for example 9.8, 12.9, 15.7 and you want to make it out of a material that's harder and tougher than the work you're normally machining so that you get durability and also the maximum stability. So if you're machining plastic parts, you could have an aluminium spider. But if you're machining steel parts, you really want a high tensile steel spider. And if you're doing a lot of heavy uh, machining where you need a really stable spider um, to support the part in a, in a heavy lathe with heavy cuts, you really want a hardened and ground steel spider that can really take the force, take the pressure. Of course you can use reverse jaws to hold large disc plates and if you've used reverse jaws before you'll know there's limitations there. They're great for large diameter discs uh, but there's only so many depth options with the steps and um, there's very real limitations. Certain work does suit step jaws and they're ideal but a spider is a very useful little chuck accessory for quite a big range of applications.
I've mentioned in other videos that you can bore the ID of a chuck out bigger, a three jaw chuck out bigger, and that gives it a lot more versatility. You can hold your work right inside the chuck. That's very useful to get maximum gripping of your work when it's inside the chuck. You can bore it out so much bigger before you run into problems. Um, ha ha you can dismantle your chuck and have a look at how big you can bore it out. If you have a look at my other videos on the subject, I think if you do a, a YouTube search on my channel for uh, collets, chucks and backplates, you'll see these sort of subjects discussed in different videos. Uh, but it's really worth boring out your chuck at least a few millimeters to increase its capacity. You can put a spider or a recessed spider back in there and get back that small bore chuck if you need it to support a small part. So you get the best of both worlds uh, with a spider and a bored out chuck. But obviously there's a limit to how far you can go before you start to weaken the chuck. Um, you need to be careful about this sort of thing. You can buy different products online for a relatively low price, like this extruded anodized aluminium pro product with magnets on um, and it probably wouldn't be highly accurate and it wouldn't give you much more stability um, a light aluminium frame like that but it would provide a lengthway stop um, for doing light positioning work for example large disc parts and plastic and so on this could be really useful for um, another product is this one with steel inserts um, but again, it's quite light and it wouldn't provide much additional stability under heavy machining loads. It's not going to support the product. It's really just a lengthway stop and setting fixture. So it's not a full stability spider. It's a stop and setting spider. Of course, an adjustable spindle stop is a very useful accessory to have and that provides very good lengthways stopping of your part or work. Especially useful for smaller diameter work that goes deep inside the chuck. But if you've got larger diameter work that doesn't go deep inside the chuck jaws, it doesn't provide the stability, security and part alignment of a spider. You may have noticed on YouTube uh, different designs of adjustable uh, stops like little pillars which uh, screw onto plates that are screwed on the chuck and they can be adjusted for height to uh, provide accurate stops for your work and they have some really good applications for uh, instrument making and tool making and working for, with large diameter thin discs. Um, but there's quite a bit of work involved in making those if you want them to be accurate. And um, they're not really going to increase the security of your part for heavy machining anywhere near as much as a basic steel spider like that. Um, I, I've often thought about making these little adjustable stops, but the advantage of a simple set of spiders is that you can just take a few seconds plug them in and then get into your machining job. They have these little adjustable uh, stops and plates mounted on the chuck. It's quite a bit of work for the average shop. It's probably not an ideal design, but it would be ideal for some specialty applications. After years of manual lathe work, I find production CNC lathe work really satisfying. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found something useful there. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and catch you next time. Cheers.